Hello beautiful and welcome back to my channel. Now if you're new here, my name is Bethany and here at The Curated Feminine I help women to really balance their masculine and feminine energies. So to learn how to stop operating from a place of burnout and to take pleasure in the lives that they've worked so hard to build. And we also do things like heal wounded feminine energy. So we do deep dives into different areas of psychology, of shadow work and of really practical things as well so that you can become the most incredible confident version of yourself like you never thought possible. It's very possible. Now today we're going to be covering polarity, which is a huge topic in and of itself, often a little bit controversial, but I'm going to trust that if you landed on my video, you understand the concepts that I'm talking about. Now anybody who's been in and out of like the feminine and masculine energetics world will know that there is a lot of advice that seems to really contradict itself. Advice often contradicts each other when it comes to, you know, how do I make my man be masculine? How do I make myself be feminine? How do I change my relationship? And it's hard because the answer to all of those things is you can't. And instead the answer is we should only be wholly focusing on ourselves. But here are some things that you can do in terms of focusing on yourself and enhancing your relationship with yourself and learning how to love yourself more deeply so that you can love others more deeply, including your partner, and also how to communicate in a way that's a lot more effective in your relationship. So the women that work with me, one of the most common complaints is, uh, my man doesn't do enough around the house. He doesn't seem to understand how much I have on my plate. He doesn't seem to connect with me the way that I really need. Like, I just feel like everything is out of balance. I feel like I'm doing everything and he's doing nothing, like help. And this is a really common complaint, not just with the women that I work with, but with women all together. If you go to Google, you know, my husband doesn't do things 50-50, you'll get so many search results because this is a really common occurrence. It started to change in the 1950s and 60s, especially around the invention of the birth control pill, because once we had the birth control pill, this meant that we could make decisions for ourselves in an easier way. We weren't bound to fall pregnant constantly, which meant that we could use our bodies in a different way and move around the world in a deep, in a different way. And then in the 1980s, we have a, we had a really big revolution with women entering the workplace. And since that kind of time frame, over the last kind of 70, 80 years or so, We've been in a really strange dynamic with the men in our lives because we are learning how to do more and more and very quickly. Women are very dynamic. We're learning how to have a lot of success in the workplace. We're learning how to smash it at home. We throw the perfect birthday parties and we have the glamorous friendships and we do this and that and everything and it leaves our husbands wondering, what am I supposed to do? So here are some ways to, instead of focusing on the things that he's doing wrong and the things that you're frustrated about in your relationship or in your marriage, here are some things that you can do to really shift the dynamic in your relationship. Now a, now a disclaimer with all of this is that this does not work straight away. So the women that work with me, normally the way that they find themselves in a situation where they're very in their masculine and their partners very in their feminine is the dynamic slowly got shifted over time. So we live in a society where, and especially modern feminism, which I'm grateful for because feminism, feminism has done a lot of us. So I'm not demonizing it, but modern feminism has created this place where women feel like they need to do everything it leaves men feeling kind of useless and then they do less and less. And when you're in that dynamic, most likely what happened is you were more in like a masculine and feminine connection. You were probably more in your feminine, he was more in, your mas in his masculine and then things slowly shifted over time. So if that's you, this video is for you because this is about how do we shift the way that we communicate? How do we make mindset shifts so that you can become more in your feminine yourself and communicate with your partner in a way that encourages him to step into his masculine. He might not do it, we can't control this, but this provides a way for him to do so far more easily than probably the way that you've been taught to communicate with men growing up. Another disclaimer is that the masculine does not have to go first. This is a common misconception that I've heard time and time again. It's great if your husband wakes up one day and goes, oh, I'm too much of my feminine. Perhaps I should start doing everything and you know mowing the lawn more often and actually splitting the chores 50-50 and I should have my partner lay in a bed of it. Like, wouldn't that be lovely? Generally, that's not how it works. Now, if your man realizes that the dynamic needs to change and he's got the wherewithal to step out, to step up, that's fantastic. He's a keeper. This is amazing. Normally though, the way that it works is we often go first as women. Women are often the ones that feel more of the strain of the relationship being off kilter. We're normally the ones that feel the exhaustion and the burnout from over performing and overdoing everything. And we're normally the ones that start to learn about feminine energy and go, oh my God, this is what's missing. Like I need to step more into my playful, relaxed, 
creative, go with the flow energy. And the more you do that, your man will slowly start to change as well. Because as you change more into the feminine, it naturally creates a shift where he goes into his masculine. And if he never does, like if you've been doing this for years and he's not going to, you know, maybe he's not the one for you. But if you feel confident that this is the partner that you want to be with the rest of your life, like this is the man for you, and things feel really off kilter, these are some ways that you can start to really shift that. And there is no shame with you going first to make the changes or him, none of it really matters. Now, the first way to really shift the dynamic in your relationship is to use playfulness with your communication. So the way that most of us were taught, the way that most of us saw communication modeled in marriages, especially growing up, if you look at sitcoms, movies, most likely the relationships that you saw in your family, it's normally nagging and it's understandable. Like if you've asked five times for something to be done, especially around the house and it hasn't been done, of course you're going to nag. You're frustrated, you're exhausted, you've been looking after kids or going to university or whatever it is that you've been doing and you need something done and it's not getting done and this is frustrating. But nagging does nothing but create bitterness in you because you'll get angry and bitterness in your man who will try to ignore you and they get all frustrated that you're nagging at him because it's like this maternal energy when you nag. Just reminds him of his mother, which is very off-putting. So, even though it's understandable that you do that, you shouldn't shame yourself for having nagged before. Instead, a good way to do it is through playfulness. So I'll give you a really random example of what this looks like. The other day I asked my husband to take out the rubbish and he gave me like a silly snarky comment back like, no, oh, you do it. And he was joking, but not really. And I came up to him playfully and I said, if you don't do this, I'm hiring our cleaner to come two days a week. I'm exhausted. I can't do everything myself. And he was like, well, if you do that, I'm walking around the house naked. <laughs> So the cleaner never wants to come back and we start, you know, verbally sparring back and forth and being silly And then at one point he's a giant guy my husband like picks me up tosses me on the couch Tickles me and then he goes to take the trash out and this is because playful energy is feminine When you are and I'm not saying you need to start a tickle fight every time you want something done That would be exhausting, but generally speaking with things that you're frustrated by if you can bring Playful energy into the dynamic into the conversation. This is you being in your feminine and this will naturally inspire him to be more in his masculine and do the things that you needed to be done. And then when he sees that he did the thing and you're happy because that's what you needed, he's much more likely to do that because it's positive reinforcement. Now the argument that I often see against this, and I had a, um, I had a reel that went viral-ish, not viral, but it had a lot more views than normal for me on Facebook. And you've got all these older guys sharing it going, yeah, women, see, this is how you should be. And all these women arguing with me going, no, I shouldn't be like that. And the context of the video was, the more gratitude you show for your partner when he does things, the more likely he is to do it again because it's positive reinforcement. And they were like, oh, I shouldn't have to be playful and grateful every time I need something done. And like, girl, I hear you. I really do. But do you want change or not? Because this is human psychology that we're working with. Gratitude and playfulness, these are things that foster more of it. Where focus goes, energy flows, right? Like this is a Tony Robbins quote. The more you focus on being grateful, in your relationship, the more he'll feel that gratitude and the more he'll do the same things. And as frustrating as it is to, and as frustrated as you might be in your relationship right now, like, are you perfect? No. Do you do things that probably drive him crazy? Probably, I'm assuming, because you're human. And when we get to this point where we're burnt out as women and we're doing too much, it's really hard to see where we could be doing irritating things in our relationship too. So if you can be the one to go first, even though it's really hard, I know it's hard, go first and be the one to be playful and grateful. It changes the whole dynamic. The next way to really create polarity in your relationship is to give him space. Men generally crave space and the man that doesn't sometimes will be suffering from like anxious attachment. Maybe he's stressed at work and needs you, you know, whatever. But generally speaking, men crave their space and you as a woman who is here on this video because you're working on yourself and you're developing yourself, you either are or should be a busy woman. You've got the, your own things that you're working on. The busier you are with things that light you up and excite you and make you feel good, the more tempting you are to him anyway because the busier you are, the more you're giving him space and the more you step into your feminine. So. If, for example, instead of, you know, you sit down at night and you're like, oh, instead of playing video games, can't you spend time with me? You never spend time with me. This is that nagging energy that I was talking about, which, you know, understandable, but we don't want to be doing that. Instead, if you can be like, oh, I am, you know, I'm, I'm going to the spa. I'm going to go watch this video that I really like. You know, see ya. If you, if you want to spend time later, let me know. If you do it that way from this place of like confident joy, from this place of I'm pouring into myself, 
that naturally puts you in your feminine and that gives him the space to step more into his masculine because you're going off to give him space to do things that put you in your feminine anyway. So this naturally changes the energy dynamic. One of the most common mistakes that I see women make when they're more in that wounded feminine energy, and if you're not sure what that is, I have a video on it, but women that are more in that wounded feminine energy, that anxious attachment style, is they will chase. And this automatically changes the dynamic in the relationship. If you're chasing him, you're in your masculine. If you're chasing him and trying to get him to spend time with you all the time, this gives him very little room to actually step up and be the man that you need him to be. So instead of chasing him and nagging at him about not spending enough time with you, if that's something that you suffer from in your relationship, go do things that light you the hell up. Go do things that make you feel really happy, that fill you with joy. And this makes it much easier for him to be attracted to you and to step into his masculine for you. And the last thing that is relevant to my point just before is to prioritize your own pleasure and really make a point of this. So the way that most relationships start out, and to be honest, it's probably not true these days, but the way that a healthy masculine and feminine relationship will start out, if that's what you're seeking, is the man chases you. And the reason this is important is if you walk into a club right now, almost every guy's gonna hit on you, right? This, this happens consistently. If you go ask a guy for his number, he's probably gonna give it to you. Whereas women generally, we're the ones that vet because we carry the biological pleasure and burden of bearing children if we ch so choose to do so, which means that we have to be far more careful about our choices. Like, a man's not going to get pregnant from being with you. It's you that carries that possibility, which means that you should be the one vetting the men that come into your life. You get to be the one to choose, and this is a pleasure for you, you get to choose the men that you want in your life, which means that your relationship likely started with him chasing you. And the way that he enjoyed chasing you was likely because you were doing things that brought you pleasure. You were doing things that bring you, you joy. And this was naturally putting you in your feminine. So if you are someone who's been married for a long time or in a relationship for a long time and you're kind of in a rut, like you're frustrated, you're burnt out, you're doing all the things, you've been in you know, more of a masculine energy state for a long time and you're sick of it, you don't wanna do that anymore, you've probably forgotten how to prioritize your pleasure. And by doing that, it will naturally start to put him more in his masculine. And one issue that I've seen come up with my female clients before, with the women that I work with is, you know, I'm prioritizing myself and you know, he's making kind of snide remarks about it. Let him, that's not a you problem. And especially if you're married with kids, right? We don't wanna let snide remarks deter us from the entire relationship. That means that there's other things at play and you can get to the root of the issue with whatever his problem is with that. But you should still be prioritizing yourself. When you prioritize your own pleasure, this puts you in your feminine, which gives him the room to be more in his masculine. The more a man sees you taking care of yourself, the more likely he is to take better care of you too. And he won't at first if he's been in, a fem is in his feminine for a long time, but as the dynamic slowly changes, he will. And the key to all of this is patience. Like, like I said, if you've been, you know, if you've been in a relationship for a year's time and you felt yourself slowly getting burnt out and stepping more into your masculine and you're now changing the dynamic, he'll probably snap back like that. It wasn't too long ago that you were in a dynamic that you're both more comfortable with. But if you've been married for a long time or if you've been in a long-term relationship and it's been years since you last felt like you were in your feminine and since he was able to really step into his masculine, if it's been years since the dynamic really got off kilter, then it might take him years to undo it. And that's okay, because if you are giving him space, prioritizing your own pleasure, and bringing playfulness into the relationship, he can do whatever he needs to do. You will have the wherewithal to withstand whatever it takes for a relationship to get to a place that feels really good for both of you. Because the key to all of this, the entire reason you clicked on this video and you're cur curious about polarity, is because you want a happier relationship. So doing all of these things eventually guides you towards a happier relationship, which is absolutely something that you deserve. Thank you so much for watching. Excuse my cat. Her name is Marshmallow. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you are curious about diving more into this work, I have a course called Queen Energy, which covers this and so much more. We dive into almost every area of feminine energetics from taking care of yourself externally, skincare, cultivating an incredible wardrobe through to doing things like inner child healing and really deep shadow work. So if you're curious about that, I'll drop the link below. And also if you're curious about cycle syncing, which is not something I covered in this video, but the women in my world prioritize their health. 
And if you've been lacking in energy, especially if you've been in burnout mode for a long time, which is part of the reason you clicked this video, cycle syncing is a way to support your body, to work with your cyclical hormones, with your, with your own hormones as a woman, to exercise, eat, and work in a way that supports your hormones way better, which gives you far more energy. So if you want the patience <laughs> to guide your relationship towards a place where you're more in your feminine, he's more in his masculine, cycle syncing will probably be one of the keys to unlocking more energy for you. I'll link that below as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.